This isn't New York. Surprised? This isn't New Orleans. Oh sure, you may see the obligatory flyover by the highly insulated and politically connected from hundreds of miles away, but this isn't likely to be seen on national television pumped into your newsfeed 24-7. But this is the United States. This is Appalachia, and I'm here to show you what happened. During the week of July 12, 2022, record flooding occurred in the coal fields of southwest Virginia here in Buchanan County. The areas hit hardest were Whitewood, Pilgrim's Knob, and Dismal Creek. Today I'm in Grundy, Virginia, meeting with my friend Noah Peters, also known as the Singing Barber. He's going to show me what historic flooding did to his community in recent days. And the first stop we make is one of the central hubs in the county for disaster relief. This is Grundy Baptist Church. My name's David Peters. I've been the pastor here for almost four years. What's the last week been like for, for your church and well, what, you, what you've seen going on here? Church burnt in 2011. And so they rebuilt this facility, and when they did, they purposely, I wasn't here, but they purposefully made it to where uh, a mission group could come in and stay that might be doing mission work around our ca county. So there's places up there to sleep and shower. Okay. The people here in this area are extremely resilient, right. and they love each other and take care of each other. And so, uh, uh, I don't know if there's a shortfall yet as far as where the need is. Right. I don't know of that. This is the, the hub, I guess, where all the meals and the mass meals are. They specifically designed this side of the church wall to be able to work different trailers, work trailers to where we can feed people. It's really cool. And they house them up at the top. How, <laughs> how fortunate he was saying that they, they designed this place after it burnt down to, to be able to right. do that. Oh, yeah, they thought far ahead of far what ahead everyone else did, for sure. Man, it smells good, whatever they're cooking, I tell you. So these people, they're from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. I, I've not met them directly, but they, they came and they're actually sponsored by Tide to wash people's clothes for them while they're, oh, man. While they're working. That's huge, yep. especially, you know, folks without their, right. their houses and Right. <laughs> Nowhere to take care right. of basic needs. Man, it's just stuff you don't think about until a real disaster hits. Yeah. And That's so awesome. They're definitely helping a lot with helping people get their clothes washed. Yeah, for sure. With uh, Matthew 25 Ministries out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, all right. And you all, when did you get here? How many days ago? Oh, uh, we got here Sunday evening. So shortly after the events unfolded. Right, yeah, we got here pretty quickly. Wow. So, so what is this behind I'm sorry, me? Actually, it was Saturday evening. We started yeah. here. We started our setup on Sunday, but we got here Saturday evening. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, what is this here? It's a uh... yeah. So it's a free laundry service. Okay. That we wash, dry, and fold up to two loads of clothing per household per day. Okay. So per day. Wash, dry, and fold, and get it back within 24 hours. All right. And are you seeing a lot of folks come out and take advantage um, I think of it yet? We're still finding out that we're here. But yeah. Okay. You guys are going to help spread. Yeah. The raise some awareness. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is really thoughtful. I mean, so this is cool. this is huge. We've also got some. Um, we brought down some supplies, but they're going out into the um, affected areas and distributing supplies as well. Okay, like your like just personal, personal hygiene care and care. Yeah, also some kind of cleanup types of items, generators and fans and um, things like that as well. Okay, very good, yeah. very good. So, all right, yeah, we're here from nine to five. Nine to five. All right, thank you so all much. Right, Appreciate you. Before we left the church, I also spoke with Ryan, who is a blue hat with the Virginia Baptist Disaster Response, about the overall logistics of getting meals to everyone affected by the flood. Started out with 200 meals a day, mm -hmm. and as of this morning, we're doing 500 meals a day, and that's to go through Saturday of this week. Wow. And then what happens after that? Yeah, probably it'll extend, we hope, or it may increase or decrease, but right now the count is rising and going up. I learned of multiple harrowing events, like one man who awoke to his wife floating away in their bedroom, but was able to thankfully grab hold of her in time and cut through their ceiling to spend the night in the rafters as the floodwaters filled their home. Then Noah shared his own experience from that night. 
I didn't want to swim. I was like, oh God. I can swim, but not when logs are rolling by you. Like, uh, this could be bad, boys. We drove our truck across that part because I thought this part was more dangerous. Turns out that was pretty bad. I drove directly across that about 30 minutes before it collapsed. Makes me feel good to be beside it. It was, it was really bad. So starting up through here, the, the flood really hit hard and you could literally see the water rushing at you. And uh, thankfully we were in a truck, so a lifted truck that we could still push through the water without it pushing us down against the, the ditch line. My um, best friend from Chattanooga, Tennessee was coming to visit me. And out of all the times he's put Grundy, Virginia in the map on his phone, it took him Hell Creek Road to get here. And he got caught directly in the flood. Um, as soon as he got onto Hell Creek, he pulled over into a random person's yard he went across their bridge and 10 minutes, he said 10 minutes after he pulled across the bridge, the water collapsed the bridge completely. So he was stranded at a house with a bunch of strangers he had never met. And he called me from their house phone. Somehow they still had power. I don't know how they still had power, but um, he called me and said, hey, I'm stranded. Can you come find me? I had no clue where he was. And somehow I ended up right beside him when I got pushed off by the water. What happens is on roads like this is when the mountains get so full of water, it all just combusts in itself. And so if you're in between both mountains, you're gonna get hit by mudslides and the water's just gonna, it takes over everything. I was gonna continue to go, but the water got so strong that I literally couldn't go any further. Um, the best, what I thought was best was to pull off. And when we pulled off to find higher ground, luckily we, we pulled off at a old regular church. It's called Hell Creek Regular Baptist. Um, I was I was watching people in their houses down this road, standing out on their porch, waving to get off the road. And um, it's really scary. Actually, one crazy story. There was a man laying on his porch out here screaming for help. And when the mudslide had fell behind his house, copperheads ran out of the slithered out of the mountain, and one of them bit him in his house. And he was laying on the porch trying to get help. He had been bitten by a copperhead that came out of the mountain after the mudslide. Something about the people around here that I've never seen in any area is during tragedy, during catastrophe, natural disaster, these are some of the toughest people I've ever seen. They just come together and they work very well in stressful env environments. And I don't know, it's, it's really cool to see them work as a team when everything happens. I've never seen a stronger group of individuals. The day after the flood, there was 44 people unaccounted for. And so that was pretty scary. We weren't sure if there were people dead or alive, but luckily no one was killed. So I made it all the way to right here and freaked out because there was mudslides happening everywhere. This creek side right here was literally going over into this church. And I pulled my car over in this parking lot and I couldn't go any further. You couldn't see any of this road. Every bit of this grass was covered up. This mudslide happened as we were standing outside and that's all that stuff over there from that mudslide. So we ran to this church. I was standing behind it when that mudslide happened. There was water, we were just triangle. There was water coming up on this side of the creek, coming down the road and through the middle. So we just got up on those stairs up on the church to get away from it.
fast forward. What do you say? I mean, what can be said in the face of such blind, merciless destruction? I came here to see what the need was and if there was any way to help, but instead I found a very self-reliant people and community already coming together and working on things, picking up the pieces in order to rebuild for tomorrow. And maybe that's why you won't see these people and places constantly put in front of you in the never-ending 24-7 news cycle. And perhaps that's why, in a small way, the world doesn't deserve them. But if theirs isn't the spirit that built these United States, I don't know what is. So if you can find it in your heart to do more than look upon them with pity, and instead you want to help them rebuild, you can donate. I'll provide links at the end of this video, in the description, and the pinned comments wherever you find it.